Jesus. What an intro to what I got to talk about. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. I was, I had the pleasure of just a few minutes while I was trying to gather and get my stuff together. I had a little trouble with my technology, so I have my laptop today. Um, but um, I was watching my bishop, Bishop Ron McLaughlin, one of my mentors in my life, and he had did an opener that I won't, I, I won't even try. You may be seated in his presence today. Um, I'm not going to try to do his entire opening, um, but he said something, and then all of this happened. He said, we're living in such a perverse time because the generation that we're, uh, that's guiding and leading the millennials and the Z, the generation Zs and all that's going on, we're living in such a time where um, the, an inclusionistic theology or theory where we have to include or whatever uh, has surrounded it has plagued the, not just the body, uh, the whole world is plaguing the church where there has to be um, uh, probably one of the most dangerous elements operating for us because we're circumventing the Bible for our own feelings. The Bible is not our guide. Something else is. And we are serving the something else because the something else serves us. And it's a dangerous thing because the season that we're in, uh, people are chasing money more than they're chasing God. And so they are busy trying to find how to do the money thing, but then the God thing they don't know of. And so it's a diff difficult time. And so I'm going to try my best. I, I, want, I want to, um, uh, what he said, and then kind of correlate with what God is sharing with, with us on today, uh, Romans 8, 37 and 39 um, is, is going to show for you as well. Uh, it reads, uh, can we read this out loud together, uh, unison, those who are online while you're home, would you read it with us? Just this one verse, and I'll go on to the next. It says, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who, who loved us. And then uh, it says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor Angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from what? The love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. When I had uh, read this and thought about the series, the interesting thing for us is um, I have always defined a conqueror in one way, and then listening and reading this, it changed it, my thought. And the question that came to mind for me was, how does a person become more than a conqueror? That's so loaded. Because you would think that you'd be more than a conqueror based off of your, your bodybuilding or some financial element, something like that. How, how do I become more than a conqueror? Because watch this. This is very important. Um, if you don't understand how to become more than a conqueror, uh, for many of us, this is really not the season to be declaring what you cannot define. I'll say it one more time. This is not the season to be declaring what you cannot define. It's imperative that we understand that. Come with me, guys. Come with me. There you go. And so this is important because if you're declaring what you cannot define, you're inviting a level of warfare to your life that you may not be able to handle. This is important because defining allows me to say the negative thing that I'm going through, I can put definition to it so it doesn't cause me to be, get depressed. That when I can define it, 
when I'm going through financial struggle, I can define it and know that it's not taking me out. My definition allows me to war through it. Okay, he says in the Bible, life and death is where? So that means my mouth can make declarations of either life or death. Can we be real for one, one moment, please? Can, can anyone be real with me? How many times while in something, you've declared something, but it wasn't life? Can I get one person that would speak a truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in it, and you're speaking more depth than life. You're not speaking what's possible. You're doing the what if of a negative. And while you're doing that, the devil is listening and saying, aha. And so you're trying to conquer, and he's saying, ah, okay, I, I got you. So the more we say something, we're placed on the radar of the enemy. And then watch this. The enemy then releases a, an attack based off of your words. Because he understands the power of words as well. So he understands that what you say starts to manifest. So he says, let me get them to speak the negative. When you are able to put definition to what's happening in your life, watch this, you will make decisions that are in line with where God has already declared for your life. Okay, this, this is important that you catch this because uh, too many of us are putting wrong definitions to certain situations. You have to be able to define certain negative things in the right light because if you don't define it right, you'll misdefine it and the enemy will have you thinking so bad that you'll go into a depression or you'll go into a process where you'll start losing. What? Okay, okay, let me. Let me say something. <clears throat> Can I say it this way? People often make decisions without definition of what they're experiencing. You'll make a decision, but you have no definition. You're not defining it. You don't know why you're going through it. You, you, have, it, you, have, no, you have not put color to it. Um, and, and so what happens is you start defining stuff that you don't know. And so we misdefine stuff, and it takes a mindset that, that, that really, it takes us down a mindset where, oh, God, you're not pleased with me. That's why I'm going through stuff. Oh, none of y'all, none of y'all have done that. When you start, when, you're mis, when you misdefine certain things in your life, oh, God has left me. He's not with me because I sinned or I did this. You start misdefining, God doesn't love me, or I don't know, he don't love me because I'm going through this, or, or all these demons, or this is happening, and this is happening, and all this is happening. And you start defining it based off of the struggle, not based off of God's definition. God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're more than a conqueror. How is it that when we're in something, we don't feel like conquerors? Oh, can I talk to the right people? So you feel like you're like, oh, my God, my children ain't acting right. This ain't going right. Oh, this is happening. And you, you're feeling the way I'm sick. I'm going through this. And all of this, you're allowing that to define what God said, I declare you healed. So until your mind gets right, you're stuck in a situation where you're feeling conquered instead of being the more than conqueror. Let me put it a different way. How many people ever prayed and said, I want patience? <laughs> okay, there's a lot of hands. Yes? How many people are still praying it? I want patience. Lord, Lord, give me patience. Come on, Jesus. Give me pa I God, I need patience. When I get on the road, I just need patience. When, I, when I'm behind the wrong person, Lord, give me patience. When my job is acting funny, Lord, give me patience. How many people prayed the patient prayer? God, I mean, good Lord Jesus, I need to be able to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I want that patience. In order to declare this, you must be able to define the things that bring patience. 
Did you hear what I just said? If you cannot define the things that, see, because we want the Lord to do something, that the Lord said, I'll do it. This is the process. The process to bring patience is to bring calamity so you know how to do it. It's not wrong with praying for patience long as you can define what patience must bring. So when you're in the middle of the worst situation, you're able to say, God, I prayed for this. Now I'm defining this. So now do it in me. And so what I do is I connect with the love of God. So God says, okay, I'm with you through this. You are in a storm, but you're not a part of the storm. You're in a situation, but you're not a part of the situation. I will walk with you through it. How many people don't want to be afraid? Ain't nobody want to be afraid. I got everybody. Come on. You might not raise your hand, but you did, and nobody won't be scared. You're like, I ain't, I ain't scared until something crawl across your legs. And you're like, I ain't scared. People want to conquer fear. Will Smith said the dopest statement. On the other side of fear, God puts on the other side of fear, everything that's good. Everything that, you, that he wants to bless you with is on the other side of fear. Here's the problem. Fear doesn't exist until you create it. So until you create fear, it doesn't exist. That's why a baby don't know stuff hot. You got to teach the baby fear. You call it respect, reverence. I get it. I mean, Y'all understand. Come on, we adults. The fact of the matter is something came across you and you realize I'm now scared of spiders. But you created the fear. They bite, but they don't bite like that. Now, there are some that are real dangerous, but we don't see them. Y'all with me so far? My brother, um, he's uh, went to the Marines. And uh, my brother, you have to, let me just, he's probably going to get me for this if he's watching. Hopefully he's sleep coming from uh, the, because he's a police officer. He, maybe he's sleep, so he won't hear this. Oh, he's watching this. I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was the most scariest person I know. Growing up, he would have this thing about him where he would, he was very scary. He just, we get on the ride, we, we would get on Batman, we're like, come on, Josh, let's go on the Batman. And we'd get, the, we'd get to the Batman ride, and in the line, my brother would throw up. I mean, he just would like get sick. I'm like, we ain't even get on the ride yet, man. He's like, uh, I need, a, uh, excuse me, uh, I'm going. I mean, he would just look at the ride. He'd be staring at it. And in his mind, he has already conceptualized, I'm going to fall or break something. So when he's on the, on, on the line looking at the ride, he get nauseous. He get sick. I could go on about this, but I, I, I don't want to stay in this part of the story. The fact of the matter is he decides, he grows up, and he goes to the Marines, or Army, excuse me, Army. Excuse me, he goes to the Army and uh, Reserve, and he decides that he finishes that, and now he wants to jump out of planes. Right? And this would be good. This would be okay if this wasn't the person that threw up on rides. <laughs> so he gets into, what is it called? What is the program? Airborne. So he's, he's, he, he graduated, by the way, but so I'll tell you the end of the story. Doesn't ruin it, because it's still going to... He's in the middle of training. People are breaking their legs, cut, falling, one guy, you know, whatever the case is. One person did or something like that, hurt himself. Ten people every day break their legs, jumping out the plane. So he calls my mother and me, and he's having a conversation. He always called her, and he's like, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me. 
But this one time, I got the pleasure of being in on this encouragement session. And we began to talk, and he's telling me about his, all the fears that he has about jumping off the plane. And um, I said to him, um, I reminded him of a, of a particular movie that made that statement, Will Smith and his son. It was a movie, and it, Will said to his son, um, if in order for you to ghost, it was like, a, you know, in order for you to do this, you have to uh, lose your fear. And I said, to, so he, Will Smith said to his son, uh, fear doesn't exist until you create it. It's in your mind. So I said that to my brother. I said, listen, you're creating the fear. It does not exist. And so, um, so he goes up and, and, and does the jump. Nothing happens. Calls us. He's like, oh, my God. I did it. Oh, yeah. He's really excited. But he has to play it cool because he's around other people, whatever the case. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is he jumps. Then he jumps again. He jumps again. Y'all miss what I'm saying? He gets, he graduates from a program and, uh, about jumping. The same person that used to throw up now says, I am able to conquer. But he didn't conquer. Watch this. He did not fight the jump. He only fought himself. All he did was redefine his own thinking. Did y'all catch this? There are things that the devil has been suggesting to you that's only you needing to redefine for your life. God said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Then I need to redefine some things in my life. It's not the jump. It's not you building the business. It's not the sickness. It's not the situation. It's your definition of it. Because you haven't defined it properly, it's causing for you to stay in a place that you should not stay. See, some of us, the question I have for you, I've got another question. Write this question out. It might not be on the, up there. It's, it's not going to be there. Can you handle the level of warfare that your declaration is bringing into your life? Oh, no, because every word you say has a declaration, and there, there are principalities. I'm in the text. There are, there are th listening to see how and what they need to do to not watch this. Paul, when writing to the Romans, he wasn't even talking more than a conqueror. He wasn't even dealing with the battle. There was no fight. Look at the text. Paul was not dealing with the Romans dealing with a fight. There was no fight. He was only dealing with the fight within themselves. Okay, all right. All right. Everybody wants to be rich. Nobody wants to be broke. How many people got an attack against their finances? Anybody? Attack against, there's an attack. If you don't put a definition on it, the attack will stay there. What do you mean by that, Pastor? The definition you put on your finances is called stewardship. I command my money where it's going to go. And until I put that definition, I always feel like I'm under attack. Okay. Hmm. Until I experienced Financial Peace University and we, we learned some stuff, I was running rampant and I introduced to our church probably, what, 10 years ago? 10, 10 years ago, until I understood it, until I got a grasp on it, I always felt, my wife and I, we always felt like we were under financial attack. We always felt like the devil was coming after us. Like you get a flat tire, oh, the devil. The car break down, oh, the devil. I need to go get a new car, oh, the devil. Please tell me I'm not the only one. Oh, we, we, need, we need a new house. And, oh, we can't. Oh, the devil. Come, come on. How many of us, the devil has attacked you like this? Oh, the devil got me, and now I got to pay something else, and I'm feeling it. Oh, the devil. Because you misdefined the attack, You've given the devil more power than he has. 
All you have is a stewardship issue, a management issue. Once you learn how to redefine it according to the word, then when you start declaring, I'm the lender, not the borrower, I get into a different position and I begin to save different. I spend different. I sacrifice different. The problem is we have improper definitions. So what happens is we'll pay cable bills and not, oh, I'm sorry, I'm off. We ain't saving nothing, but we got cable. We ain't saving nothing, but you got internet. We ain't saving nothing. I got four cars. No, no, we, we have, we don't, ha what we have is a definition issue. And so when you say I'm more than a conqueror in my finances, the issue is what definition are you putting on the conqueror? <sighs> okay, all right. Now, this is not a financial message. You could take that same attack and place it on any area that the enemy has been trying to wage a war on you and you've been declaring an improper or misdefinition of what he's been declaring. Y'all with me? Maybe we should define this. I, I'm, I'm moving. Oh my. Where we at? I, I can't even see the time. Okay, all right. I don't, I don't know what time it is. So y'all, y'all let me know. Y'all wave at me when I'm, I'm, I'm too long. Let me give some. Cause I, I didn't even. I just got to the beginning of the message. I'm all right. Let's give some definitions. Can we read these out loud together? All right. This is the definition that the dictionary gives for conqueror. Here's the issue. It says, can y'all see that? Okay. All right. You don't have to read the word subjugate. Just re let's go and read this one line together. Come on. To gain or acquire by force of arms. Right? That's called subjugating, conquering. You're taking territory. Right? To overcome by force of arms. That's called vanquishing, conquering the enemy. The third one is to gain mastery over or win by overwhelming obstacles or opposition conquering the mountain who are you great mountain who are you great mountain? yeah yeah some some people stop singing uh, i seen you i seen you i seen you because you didn't understand why the question was being posed so you didn't understand the definition the question was being said over and over again so your mind can really relegate the answer Someone asks you a question over and over again because they're trying to see if you are defining the question right, if you're defining the answer. So some people, they said it over and over again. Some people like this. They can't say, who are you, Gray Mountain? You're like this. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know. The fourth definition to overcome by mental or moral power. Okay? None of these definitions are the definitions that Paul is talking about in Romans. I mean, these are great, and we will talk about these throughout the month, but these are not the definitions that he's referring to. Are, are y'all ready for this? Watch this. The definition, that when he says you're more than a conqueror, the definition, okay, you can put it up with me. Come on. Let's, uh, the definition of a conqueror from Paul's perspective is understanding the revelation of the love of God. No, 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 no. When he says I'm more than a conqueror, he was not talking about those, those definitions of the world. He says, when you understand the perspective of the revelation of the love of God. Look at the surrounding text, please. I need you to go back and look at surrounding text. Then you'll have understanding. Leave it up for a minute because they might need to catch that. So, Because watch this. You become more than a conqueror when you understand the magnitude of God's love for your life. What do you think the devil is always after? He's always after your relationship with God. Always trying to lessen how much time you spend with God. Always trying to stop your worship. Always trying to get you to focus on other stuff so the magnitude of God's love never gets to the forefront. Instead, you're looking at everything else and trying to be more than a conqueror as a believer but losing the battle because you don't realize the power of God's love. So watch this. The number one. The number one objective of the enemy 
is to separate you from the love of God. This is number one. How's he going to do it? Simple. Don't read the Bible. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by? We ain't, read, we ain't hear enough Bible. You, you only listen to it on Sunday and Thursday. And if you get on at 12 o'clock, if you're not doing those, that means that you're not, you're, you're, you will play. How many of us listen to music? I'm, I'm, I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm, no, 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 no. We will listen to other stuff before we listen to the right stuff. And all the enemy's trying to do is separate you from the love of God. Well, what he has to do is get you to redefine the love so that you can be conquered rather than to conquer. If the enemy, watch this, if the enemy can successfully separate you from the love of God, watch this, he can change your status from being a conqueror. Did you hear me? He'll change your status. Watch this. You can come to church and not be the church. So the enemy knows that so he can get people to come to church all the time but never be the church on, the, on Monday through Friday. So there's a false symbolism of their sacrifice. It looks like you're a Christian because of Sunday. But Sunday doesn't make me a Christian. A Christian is a Christ follower. So until I define it right, I can't live it right. And so many believers have defined it improperly so they look like a Christian, feel like a Christian, but no power. Well, how you know I ain't got no power? Simple. When you go through stuff, you forget the love of God. When you go through stuff, you start going down depression. That's when I got, well, okay, I'm going. Listen, let me not, I need to understand something. Mental illness is real. All the elements are real. But here's the challenge for anyone that's dealing with struggles of up highs and lows. When you're going through highs and lows, never leave listening to the word. Never, because this is what, come on, anybody ever been depressed? Can I talk to somebody that's been depressed? Okay, good, good. Let me talk in the room. Watch this. The one thing that you want to do when you get depressed is be alone. Come on, can I talk to somebody? And you start isolating yourself. Oh, I don't want to be with nobody. I need a minute. I need some me time. And while in it, the devil is imprinting and you're thinking through all the mess and you're giving definition to what you're going through. And what you're going through is taking you lower. Oh, I can't be in I can't be in service today. I, oh, I can't be on the TBI today. I can't do why? Why? Because the devil understands the separation. If I could separate you, I could change your status. No longer are you more than a conqueror. Now principalities have got you. Now situations have got you. Now, oh, everything has got a hold of you, but the love of God. Okay, okay, I gotta stop. I got. I got. Oh man. Can I, can, I, can I say this to you? I, I hope this is up there. I hope this slide is up there. The enemy fights to change your status with God before he tax you. Did you hear me? Before the enemy attacks you, he tries to change your status. What do I mean? I mean, he tries to get you isolated and out of the word. And then he'll try to start, oh, you need to just go ahead and smoke that. Do that. Drink that. Because if I can get you to smoke that, sniff that, drink that, feel that, then I could separate you enough. Then I'll attack you. The attack is never when you go through the hardship. The attack happens after the calamity. And you look, you're like, all of a sudden you feel some kind of way so you don't pay a bill. You went shopping, right? Watch this. You go shopping because you need to feel some kind of way. You start feeling some kind of way, you feel better with your new thing. That's not the attack. He just got you separated from the love so your status has changed. Now you forget you were supposed to be a more than conqueror in your finances. You forgot. So you went shopping and you blew some money that was supposed to go somewhere else. Now you come to the moment where you got to pay for something else. And now you're in attack mode. 
Oh, you in the tack. Now you're like, why am I going through? It's the shoes you bought. You don't even remember buying the shoes? Oh, I don't know why I can't pay this bill. You bought something else that... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, uh. So the enemy will always change your status before he attacks you. You think the attack is in the good moment. No, the attack comes after the good moment. Well, okay, watch this. You ever come to church and it be so high? High. Holy Spirit. And you're like, yeah. All that. All that happened. You crying. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh. My, my God. You at the altar. You done heard it. You felt the spirit. The spirit spoke to you. And you like, yes, I heard him. The enemy says, let me test that status. And then you go out the door and he says, status check. And then you go doing bleep, bleep, bleep. Mother. And you all bleeping all of a sudden. Just left the spirit of God. Right after the spirit. What happened? He wasn't attacking you while you were in the spirit. He wanted to check your status. Your status gave an indication of whether or not it was real. Your status. He said, I need to check your status. Status check. I need to know if what you did in church was really real. Oh, you came, but were you really, did you really experience what you, he said, I need to do a status check. And the status check tests whether or not, are you really in love with God? You ain't in no sack. You don't love God. Yeah, yeah. You think you love God? All right, all right, all right. I got to close. Please tell me. I, I don't know where I'm at. Uh, okay, all right. My watch is broke. Okay, okay, watch this. John 10.10. 10. Y'all know this. Y'all know this. John 10.10. 10. Let's put it up there for me, please. John 10.10. 10. Watch this. Says, the enemy comes. Come on. Steal. Kill. Have you ever put definition to that? Because people think that that means that he's coming to kill you right now. People, have you ever put definition to that? To steal from you right now. Watch this. He said, he's, he's coming to steal, to kill, and destroy. Have you put definition to that? Because whenever you do that, you'll understand what you're supposed to be declaring while he's stealing from you. Come on, why? Come on. So there are times when he says, I, I just need to steal their hope. So if I'm going to steal their hope, I got to still touch their stuff. What do you think he did to Job? He, he took everything. I'm going to take everything. He said, and God said, have you considered my, God said, have you considered my servant Job? What was that of? What, what was that all about? Why, God, would you offer me up? to the devil and tell why is that the case because he said i need to check a status i need to know whether or not there's real love and if there's real love whatever you'll go through you'll still be with me some of us god just doing a status check he's just saying will you still stand with me through it so he goes up to joe just don't kill him you could take, you could touch their stuff, but just don't kill them. Job goes through some stuff. His friend said, curse God and die. His wife said, curse God and die. Everybody's saying, hey, God not doing what he said he would do for you. Job said, though he slay me. 
yet will I trust him. So he said this. He was in his mindset. He said, I'm a conqueror without the stuff. I'm a conqueror without what's going on. He already recognized that the principle is here first. If I know that I know that I know that he loves me, then guess what? It's not going to matter because that's when the Bible says no weapon shall prosper. He says, I'm more. Oh, okay, okay, I got to stop. Oh. Oh. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. I got I to close. I got to. I know. Watch this. Let me tell you what the enemy's doing. He's fighting to change your stand because he knows your victory is guaranteed. Because of your status in God. So he's always altering, saying, I need to affect their stand, and I need to affect their status. Okay, I got to prove this. Too many believers are being separated from the love of God in this season, and they're losing their stands. They're looking at other people. Can I just say this? I don't know who this is for. Stop looking at other people's stuff because it's getting you off status. Stop looking at what other people got. This is not a materialistic contest. This is not a stuff contest. And so what happens is when God's getting trying to get you to sow, you can't sow because you see too much that you want. And so when God's saying, but well, what about me? You say, oh, God, what about me? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Oh. All right, all right. The definition's off. All right. Please tell me how much time I got. Please tell me. Uh, uh, all right. What am I? What's it? Okay, okay, okay. Give me my gloves. Give me my stuff. Watch this. All right, watch this. All right, y'all. Y'all. The conqueror must do something every day to maintain their stand. You, 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 you can't just do Sunday. And maintain the right status. You people, people think, oh, I went to church this Sunday, and then that's it, and think that they can still fight the same. So, but watch this. Let's go. Let's go to Ephesians six. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna tie this up because because y'all 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 taking too much. Finally, my brethren, come on, be strong in the Lord, and the power of His might put on the put on the whole armor of God why that you may be able to no fight did he say fight no 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 hold on hold, hold. Did, we, did we read one hold on put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to fight the devil it says what stand against the wiles of the devil Okay, okay, come on, let's skip. Can we skip the 13? Skip the 13. Okay, y'all know what's in between. He, he, he says some stuff in between 13. Read that at home. But look what it goes again. He says in 13, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to fight. Withstand? I would think that in this verse that talks about the greatest battle for the believer, principalities and angels and principalities, that he would say fight. Why wouldn't he supplant the word fight there? He puts the word withstand. I, 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 there's already a guarantee on this. He said, I just want you to withstand what you're going through. If you can withstand and understand what I'm taking you through, you'll just stand. Wait, wait, he goes on further. Watch this. He says, in the evil day, and having done all. Why wouldn't he say fight? I wish he said what? Go ahead to 14. Go on to 14. Then he says again, stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Okay, okay. See, watch this. Some of us, 
We have been missing it. The focus of the believer should be to fight to maintain their stand and not fight to defeat the enemy. Put, 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 put the gloves on. You put them on. You put them on. Watch this. How many of us have been trying to defeat the enemy in certain areas of our lives? Been trying and you keep feeling like you're losing. But watch this. The issue is that believers have been fighting the wrong fight. All God said is, stand. I'm going to fight the battle. The battle is not yours. All I need you to do is withstand the blows. Some of us are letting the life beat us up because you have not put on your breastplate, your armor, your gloves, the helmet of salvation. What is all that for? All of that is to remind you of what? The love of God. When I understand the love of God, I fight differently. All right, watch this. I'm almost ready for you. You don't train to defeat the enemy. The enemy's defeated. Come on, somebody. You don't have to train. The enemy's already defeated. You should be training to maintain your stand. Some of us have been missing it. He says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels nor principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. Nothing is just, just separate. Watch this. Come on, watch this. I, I, want, I want to take you back. So David's going to be, I was going to try to put all this on, but I need to watch this. Many of us are coming to battles thinking that we're suited, but we ain't got nothing on. You can't even remember a scripture in the moment. So watch this. The headgear is designed so that whatever the devil was trying to suggest, you won't think it. Why? Because I got to understand that God is with me. He's not going to leave me nor forsake. So while, while I'm going through the stuff, God says, just maintain your stand. And then watch this. Put your hands up. Watch this. He says, there is such called a fight position. But watch this. He doesn't even tell us to get into fight position. Stand. Why? Watch this. You've already, but watch this. He says, my favor is a shield around you. I'm in scripture. So watch this. It doesn't mean you won't get hit. It just means the blows won't take you out. You might get hit, but he says it won't, it's okay. You're going to get hit, but he says, guess what? The stand is going to be able to be in place. I'll give you the ability to still stand through it. I can't tell you how many times I've read more than a conqueror, and I thought more than a conqueror was me taking the mountain. I can't tell you how many times I listened to it and thought, oh, God, I got to do this. I got to box. Here's what I came into the realization. Floyd Mayweather, about to go into, I think he's about to fight again, isn't he? He's talking about it, right? Everybody knows Floyd Mayweather. He's a dangerous guy. I mean, he just, I don't know why. They, no one has been able to unseat him like that. He's just, he's, he is what he is. He's an anomaly. But watch this. Floyd Mayweather is not going to go in the ring without training. He's, he's training, watch this. Not knowing his opponent, only knowing videos of what his opponent is capable of. So he's not training necessarily for the other person. Watch this. He's training to maintain his own stands on what he's capable of. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, um, 
Mike Tyson went back in the ring. Y'all remember? He went back in the ring. But he was not trying to fight the way he used to fight. He now was trying to maintain his stance or who he is now. So he was ready to take a punch. He was ready to throw a punch. But he said it did not matter of the outcome because he said, I've already reached a certain status. Now I'm just trying to maintain my Someone needs to understand this very clearly. The devil's trying to take your stand. That's all. That, that's why you get frustrated with trying to do what God's trying to tell you to do. Oh, maybe I'm not talking to, I'm talking to the wrong group of people. Because what's been, what's been, what you've been dealing with is your stands with God. We're dealing with a culture that's trying to redefine the stand. My, 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 my son said a word to me, and I, I won't uh, blast the word out, but he said a word to me, and what the word was, uh, 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 he was trying to redefine it based off of his own definition. And I said, son, I'm sorry. You cannot redefine that word in that way because it cannot be defined that way. He said, I can say whatever I want. I can do whatever. I, 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 could, I can say it. it. It could be that. No, it can't. It is defined based off of, you can't tell gravity is not gravity. Gravity has its own stands. And you can't tell gravity, you know what? You're not going to be gravity today. Today, you're going to be air. And someone come up to you. Say, okay, all right. You're air today. And gravity says, okay, jump. <laughs> and gravity says, you think you can redefine what God defined? Watch this. I'm closing. God told David, you're going to be king. David goes through this process where God was declaring who he was. God was waiting for David to define it. David goes into battle with Goliath. David goes into battle with Saul. He's on the run. He's got the same sword. He's got the sword that he beat Goliath with. He's, he's now ready for this new battle. He's in the cave of Medulla. He's in the cave, and he's got able to cut the robe of Saul. And God reminds him, that's not how I declared it for you. That's not how you're going to define it. And he had to apologize because watch this. God is trying to get you to redefine what the world is trying to say about your life. And to remind you of what he says about your life. About your marriage. About your finances. About your health. About your situation. And until you allow God to define, God to declare, and say, God, I just want your love. I want to understand the revelation of your love. And when I understand that, there's nothing that I can't do when you're with me. Oh, everything could be falling apart. But God says, I'm not, I'm not leaving. I challenge y'all today. This month is going to be very challenging because we thought conquering was about fighting, but conquering is about understanding. If you don't understand, then you can't conquer. What you don't know is very tough to conquer because certain things you need help with. There are certain things if I'm going to, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do it, I might get my wife. Wife, I, I need you to help me do this. There's certain things, if I'm going to lift a certain amount of weight and I know I can't lift it by myself, I'm going to ask for a spotter. Why? Because I know certain things require a different level of conquering, of understanding. Today, I want to challenge you. Many of us have been defining wrong. Many of us, the enemy has tried to alter our status. I want you to declare to the enemy today, 
you will not alter my status in this season. You need to declare today because you want everybody want I want financial freedom. I want this. Then you need to change your status with God. Change your stands with God. Allow him to be a part of the process, not a side wing man. Let him be the man. We got to give God first. God, you know, you're going to be in the first, the, the top part of this. I'm going to follow you. I want to pray with you today because I, I believe that I, as we were talking throughout this, many of us got hit in the eye. Many of us, our minds, we know we need to change them. How many of us know that this, you, you, that's you, I'm talking to you like, I'm not thinking right. I know I'm not thinking right. And I pray that something said today for those who are watching you, like, you know what? I need to get around the right people. If the people you're around are not going in the direction that you're trying to go, you might need to shift. If the people you're around are not in, blowing on the wind of God in your life, it's possible that you're, you got the wrong circles. Your circles need to expand. I'm praying that you would conquer this one with the Lord on your side this season. Can I pray with you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I've tried to say exactly what you have placed on the inside for me to say. Now, God, take what was spoken, what was declared, and Lord, speak to the hearts of every believer that's listening. Those who are watching online, those who are in the room, oh God, those who will watch this later, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would redefine areas that we've given negative definition to. Father, I pray that you would help us even now be more than conquerors, that you would increase our love for you. I pray now that you would break down every wall, everything that the enemy has tried to ultimately get us off course in. And we declare right now, the enemy will not win. Would you make that declaration of prayer? The enemy, you will not win. We're not going to have to fight this battle. It's already a guaranteed victory, but we must learn how to stand. And so, God, I pray now that you would allow us to stand. I pray for those who are in need of a shift in their lives. If you're watching this or you're listening to this and you're like, I need something to shift. And you heard the word, but now there's corresponding action to conquer. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. You need to really make some decisions to say, I need to really serve him more than Sunday. What else, God, did you want me to do? If that's you today, can I pray for you? Father, I pray for that person that wants to give their heart to you. I pray for the person that's ready to make the next step in their love relationship with you. So God, have your way in their hearts even now. If that's you, would you make a simple confession with me? Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. I admit that I am a sinner, but today I believe, I trust that you have the power to lead me through my life. And I want to allow you to walk me through these next few years of my life. Have your way in me, oh God. I want to make a commitment to you on today. I love you today. I'll give you my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you make that confession, if you declare that over your life, you're saved. But it's more than that. We got to change your stand. Would you, there's some information they're going to put in there, or you can DM us, whatever way you want to connect, but you need to be a part of our family in this season because you need navigation, and I want to help you on today. So just put your, they're going to give you text message information, text in and allow us to connect with you on today. If you're in the room, you can do the same thing, and we'll call and reach out to you and connect with you in this season. Father, I thank you for now for what you're going to do for those who are doing that right now that you would have your way and you would be glorified in their lives and you would do a new thing in them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Come on, would you give the Lord a hand praise of today?